of the Reading Missile Light Department, Board of Commissioners being videotaped at the RMLD office at 230 Ash Street, Reading, Massachusetts, for distribution to the community television stations in Reading, North Reading, Wilmington, and Linfield. The RMLD Board of Commissioners recognizes the importance of hearing public comment at the discretion of the Chair on items on the official agenda as well as items not on the official agenda. We ask that all questions or comments from the public be directed to the Chair and that all parties, including members of the RMLD Board, act in a professional and courteous manner when addressing the Board or responding to comments. Once recognized by the Chair, all persons addressing the Board shall state their name and address prior to speaking. It is the role of the Chair to maintain order in all public comment and ensuing discussion. Introductions. We have CAB member Vivek, Vivek Sony. Sony. Welcome, Vivek. I think this is your first uh, time attending. Second, second time. Second, okay. Second, second. I must have missed that one. So, welcome. And uh, Dave Talbot, Vice Chair, being the Secretary again, back to back days. And okay, public comment. Doesn't look like we have anyone here. <coughs> and I think we can go ahead and start right with. The fiscal year capital budget. Hamid? Great. All right. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm going to present you the budget for FY19. The first slide, if you could uh, please change that. Yeah, the first slide shows you that uh, these are basically the projects that were completed or scheduled to be completed in FY18 by June 30th. Uh, you see that, you know, the distributed generation, ga ga gas generation, GIS. Uh, LED street lighting, uh, 4 w 9 uh, circuit getaway underground, and various upgrades at Station 3. And uh, the ones that you know, they see that in green, these are the one the projects that they were recommended by Booth Study. <coughs> so they're all completed. And uh, basically, we, uh, we're proud that you know what these projects, they added uh, to the reliability of the system. So uh, the next uh, slide is showing you the projects that they're continuing. They started in FY18 and they're continuing to, continuing to FY19. Woburn Street in Wilmington, Pole Line, we split the projects in two years, FY18, FY19, and uh, the cost is approximately $213,000 each year. The 115 KV pole transmission upgrade, these are the two lot transmission lines that they're feeding the station four and we tested the poles, uh, the equipment, and everything they need to be upgraded. So we split the projects in two years. Uh, half is gonna be done uh, in FY18, and the rest is gonna be done in FY19. <coughs> and it's gonna cost $145,000 for FY18, for $223,000 for FY19. The next project is 35 KV underground cable upgrades. These are the underground uh, cables that they're feeding the station five from station four. The cables are antiquated, they're over 30 years old, and they, they're in need of upgrades, uh, which we uh, are going to do half this year and the other half next year. So uh, the cost for this year is 207,000, the cost for next year is 252,000. Padmont switch gear, next project is Padmont, Padmont switch gear upgrades for <coughs> industrial parks and other parks as well. The total cost of the project is 1.76 million and it's over this, it's a six year plan. We already should replace some of the switches. The rest of the switches are uh, scheduled to be replaced in the next four years. Uh, so we are asking for $436,000 for FY19 estimate to spend uh, uh, to replace those antiquated switches, which is they're rusted, they're old, and they need to be upgraded. <coughs> the grid modernization, uh, the total cost of the project is approximately eight and a half million dollars over the next 10, 15 years. So we are spending $381,000 in FY18, and we are requesting $676,000 in uh, <coughs> FY19. The new Wilmington substation, as you know, the load growth in, in Wilmington and especially in the Ballot Vale area, that requires, and also the antiquated substation, Station 5 in Wilmington, it requires an, uh, a new, uh, either upgrading the station as it is or installing a new substation elsewhere. The location of the new uh, substation, it's uh, already picked, so it's gonna be somewhere in the Ballot Vale area. <coughs> and uh, the design and prim preliminary studies are uh, underway in order to uh, get that started and hopefully that, that will be finished by uh, FY 2023. 
<coughs> so what you see, the 267,000 was supposed to be for the land, the cost of the land, and next year we're gonna, the 151,000 is gonna pay for groundwork and engineering and some of the ordering, some of the equipment. Miscellaneous, uh, uh, the next item is a miscellaneous item, which is LED lighting at is, uh, that 230 Ashes Street, parking lot upgrade at 230 Ashes Street, the electric vehicle, charging stations, and the battery storage, which we spent uh, $115,000 this year. We're gonna be, we're requesting $340,000 for FY19, started July 1st. The next slide is showing you the new projects. The new projects that, you know, they proposed either for the reliability system. The Ballot uh, Street uh, in Wilmington pole line upgrade, that's part of the uh, requirements in order to bring the feeds from the new substation Ballot uh, area to bring the feed down to, to toward the <coughs> Route 125 and to provide the load relief for Station 3 and Station 4. Uh, the total cost of the upgrade is $250,000 for two years. So the half of that is going to be done FY19, which is going to cost $225,000. The next three projects for W5, 4W6, and 4W16, these are the getaway upgrades. These are one-year projects that we're hoping to complete that in FY19. That's going to bring up the ratings of the cables or the feeders out of the station four that they're currently, these cables are, they are antiquated, as well as, you know, the low ratings that it, 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 they have. It's gonna help the reliability, and especially during the switching, it's gonna help us to <coughs> be able to p pick up more load. Uh, the next project is the Mass DOT project main, uh, on Main Street and Hopkins Street in Reading. Uh, the estimated cost of that is 225,000. This is the project that's gonna be reimbursed from the state. So it's a placeholder for it. So if that goes, it goes. That if it doesn't go, that's not going to be. Uh, what, is, what are they going to do there? What are they going to actually do? <coughs> what the, they're, they're widening up that area. That's what. Uh, the widen the, the area. Right. That's what. The, that's what the, we've been told. The project is not 100% uh, in, in done. So it's still in the design stage. So they told us that they want to relocate the poles and then you know, uh, upgrade uh, that intersection. <coughs> so that's going to cost 225000 estimated. Uh, the next one is the power lab and the tool equipment. These are, the, you know, we need uh, six electric phasing meters then, and the new high pod for testing the cables. And that's going to cost $76,000. And that's reoccurring because as we go, we need to, inst uh, to get buy more of these in the next few years in the future for those meters. The next uh, slide shows you the annually budgeted and re recurring uh, projects. <coughs> These are miscellaneous computers, uh, rolling stock replacements, or like you know the uh, the trucks, uh, the underground van, the forklift for next year, which is going to cost two hundred twenty-nine thousand uh, dollars. The building and office and security upgrades for two hundred fifteen thousand. AMI mesh ne network is expansion, that's part of the meter upgrade uh, pro program that was started actually in two years ago. And uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a new Eaton system, which is very good and you know, that's actually helping us with uh, bringing more data back from the field to the substation, to the control uh, uh, room and also the skater room. Uh, <coughs> the communication equipment like fiber optics nodes that we're gonna have to add in order to bring more data from the field into the scaling system, that's uh, gonna cost approximately $100,000. $100,000 we're gonna spend in FY18. It's gonna cost $121,000 uh, estimated for FY19. The pole replacement program, these are the uh, result of the pole inspection that requires in order to upgrade the poles. Uh, uh, we, we were testing approximately 650 to 700 poles a year. And some of those, they, they're condemned. Some of them, they're failing the test and they require upgrades in the older sections of the towns in all four communities. We're spending, we estimated to spend 209,000 in FY18 and 263,000 for FY19. The secondary main uh, uh, and replacement program, this is the program that we started as uh, one of the maintenance programs uh, two years ago. And this is like 10 to 15 years project. And every year we're spending so much, approximately between 200 to 350,000, trying to upgrade all the secondaries, the mains, or as well as the services to the houses and the connectors in order to replace them. So we, we, we catch uh, those premature 
um, uh, failures, and we fix them before they happen. Actually, being proactive rather than reactive. 13, 8 kV uh, upgrades the step down areas. Uh, we got approximately 42 areas, like 54 step down transformers that every year we try to remove or remove some of those uh, out of the line and uh, convert them to 13.8 in order to uh, reduce the losses in the system. Uh, because the higher voltage you go, the loss is going to be reduced uh, uh, tremendously. <coughs> so in 2014, we, re we did four. In 2015, we did another four. 2016, we are, it's on the way in Anthony Road in North Wil Wilmington. We're going to do four step downs. And in 2018, it's a slate. We have slated, we slated two, uh, four to five uh, uh, step down transformers. And starting FY19, there are 30 areas that these step downs gradually, they're going to be phased out of the system, removed. So we're anticipating to spend 71,000 FY18, and we would like to uh, spend 331,000 in the next year. These two projects, they go hand in hand. Once we uh, upgrade the, the area and upgrade to 13.8, removing the step downs, we're also taking care of those secondary main and connectors as well. So that's why that, you know, they're two separate, but uh, in reality, the area, each area we're approaching, we fix those as we go. Uh, underground facility upgrades, again, uh, we got the lots of uh, underground areas, uh, approximately 216 underground areas, the underground uh, URDs in, in, the, in total territory. 32 in Reading, 70 North Reading, 48 in Linfield, and about 66 in Wilmington. These are the areas that uh, the uh, in entire uh, infrastructure, the underground infrastructure, have been getting old, they're antiquated, they need to be uprooted, they need to be fixed, and we try to do schedule to do them uh, so many year. So that, again, it's gonna take a while to take care of them, but we are going prioritizing by the age and the condition of the equipment, and uh, we are requesting, we're doing, we're taking care of a lot of them this year. Uh, to, uh, it's gonna cost approximately 345,000, so we're gonna be requesting to spend another 332,000 as a preventative uh, maintenance measure in order to uh, prevent uh, any premature failures. <coughs> uh, service connections, uh, this is for the new customers, for the residential and commercial. Every year approximately we spend 150,000, so we're asking for 142,000 for FY19. The routine constructions, these are the pole settings and transfers, overhead and underground maintenance, uh, the pole damage damages, hazmat, oil spills, storm troubles, street lights, and the new underground subdivision constructions. Every year you see that number, that's approximately $1 million. So we, uh, we are uh, anticipating to spend $1,044,000 in FY18 and approximately $1,078,000 uh, in FY19. The miscellaneous uh, purchases, these are meters and metering equipment, transformers and the substation equipment. Uh, these are the purchases only, not the labor, and that's, uh, we anticipate the, the, that, you know, that to spend 693000 for FY19 and be estimating $651,000 for FY18. <coughs> In summary, uh, FY18 recap, we budgeted $7,686,000. We're estimating a little bit, uh, you know, uh, over $8 million. So the variance is 323,000. And uh, uh, this is part of it is because, you know, the, some of the invoices like for a DG unit, the, the last invoice we just paid like $300,000, $340,000. Uh, so it was just recently paid. It was previously approved budget. So we pushed it there. So because they didn't complete the uh, sound test, it didn't meet the requirements. They were working on it and we just paid it. So uh, that is basically explaining a little bit spillage or what goes over, above and beyond what was budgeted. In FY19 uh, planned, we estimating, uh, we estimated the spending is uh, $7,570,000. Basically, that's the list of all of those projects that you have uh, in front of you. So we respectfully requesting your uh, approval to spend uh, $7,570,000 for FY19 so we can continue 
uh, over construction of uh, the, the lines as well as taking care of the system uh, as we've been doing for the past few years. <coughs> right. Questions for Hamid? Yeah. yeah, so I mean, I know you've highlighted the booth recommendations. Do you know about how much, uh, what percent the uh, CapEx budget is related to the booth recommendations? I haven't really done that, but you know, we, 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 we every year there is a schedule. They gave us the schedule yeah. to do that. I don't know exactly what percentage is that, but. Uh, it's okay if you had it, I would yeah, be interested. I don't have that number in front, in front of me, unfortunately. Thank you. Were you going to say something, Colin? I was just going to say that, you know, on, on the six-year plan, I mean, I know you did a summary, but you did color coding. So if you're looking at the front page and you look at the light yellow, when he talks in summary about the grid modernization and optimization, you want to know, okay, what does that entail? How many SCADA made switches and teleruptors, hmm. SCADA upgrade software, the OMS modules and the systems that you saw inside the control room last night, and then the cap bank automation. Uh, is what's scheduled for the six years, and then the right-hand side, it gives you a little tickles of exactly what that means. So each, you know, the color code for the Army Green, it looks like gray or Army Green is all related to the new Wilmington substation. Orange is force accounts. Uh, light pink is demand management. So we try to color code those so that uh, you can know. And the project summaries, you have them, I believe. You see that, you know, on the front, it explains what the project is. In the back, it gives you the capital project cost sheet for the material and the labor, the estimates, that what it entails. So they're all in detail. You know, I was going to say, I think you've all done a great job in Thank you. tracking the CapEx uh, mm -hmm. Thank and you. meeting the project deadlines, which I think is why the reliability is so high. So yep. And, and I might make a comment yep. that after seeing the control room yesterday, which was very right. impressive, uh, if these improvements are anywhere near what has happened there, it's very well deserved. Thank it's you. Fantastic. Yeah, great well, good point. Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you. It was all a team effort, so mm -hmm. everybody contributed. Great. I have one question. Yep. Bill? I have one question. It's more specific. It, you know, reading this, all the backup, which I did, um, you said you're going to redo the parking lot. What are we? What are we actually going to do, back out there? The parking lot over here. Parking lot. I don't know. It's whatever the page 13 okay, of the. Okay. So uh, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but the the parking lot uh, fills up with water and ice. Generally, yeah. I try to take those spots to keep the customers from hurting themselves. But the the parking lot needed to be resurfaced and whatever. The second half of the parking lot is wasted space because it's crushed rock. Right. Okay. So when we were trying to figure out to put the charging station in, it made a lot more sense to have you come into the parking lot and park like this, back out, go forward, you know, like a regular parking lot. So we brought it to the town uh, plans, uh, and so you'll, you'll double the amount of spots, uh, and it'll be resurfaced so you don't have water puddling and whatever, and then the charging station will move over there so that you'll have dedicated spots. So it, you'll be, the only, the only issue that the town had was that you had to have a sufficient amount of room between the street, Ash Street, and when you pull into the parking lot. So there wasn't enough. The parking lot is actually going to extend all the way over to Station 1. You know what I mean? So there'll be some grassy area, but essentially you'll come in and you'll just park. You, you pull out, you'll go straight. It's just going to be beautiful. But it's we're going to reuse curb cuts that are already there, and we're minimizing the amount of money. We're going to reuse the gravel. Mm -hmm. We have to put in the electric for the for the um, charging station, but that's basically what we're doing. Okay, all right. I was just curious. I mean, that's you know, good. <coughs> good. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. okay. Vivek, so do you have any? No. We've we reviewed this. Oh yeah, right. You've already yeah. done it. Mm -hmm. In so fact, um, we have a the motion. Yeah. There? Yeah. Well, I just wanted to say that we have a letter from George Hooper and uh, the cab that on. April 30th, they passed this vote uh, for the capital budget three to zero, and as well as the operating budget three to zero. So, yes, please read the motion. Move that the RMLD Board of Commissioners approve the fiscal year 2019 capital budget dated March 29th, 2018, in the amount of seven million five hundred and seventy thousand four hundred and eighty-nine dollars, as presented. Can, right, we add, second. Can, can we add on the recommendation of the general manager at the end of that motion? We should. 
Okay. I can, I can add that onto there uh, with a note that on April 30th, 2018, the CAB voted to recommend that the board approve the 2019 RMLD capital budget. Okay. I'll second that. All right. All those in favor? Okay. Show the motion was passed five to zero. Okay. I think we can go right to the operating budget, which we saw presented yesterday. And somebody want to read that motion? Cab voted on April 30th. Yeah. Sure. Uh, move that the RMLD Board of Commissioners approve the fiscal year 2019 operating budget dated March 29th, 2018, with a net income of $4,053,233 as presented. Okay. Second? And on the recommendation of the general manager should be added. On the recommendation, recommendation of the general manager. On the recommendation manager. of the general yeah. manager. Right. Exactly. Okay. Second? I'll second it. All right. All those in favor? Ooh. I forgot to say discussion. Any discussion? Retroactive. Already voted. All right. It's already passed. <laughs> right. Five to zero. Yeah. No. Okay. We had a discussion last week. Yeah. That's right. We did. We did do the okay. discussion. My question from last night was answered today, so thank you very right. much. <laughs> now we have the, um, the motion for the rate adjustments. And I have uh, the letter. This um, passed by the cab as well, three to two. The effective July 1, 2018. Somebody want to read that one? Uh, just a quick question. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, which of the two uh, rates uh, did you go with here? Uh, this is uh, scenario three. three. Option two. General manager, okay. Do you want me to read the motion? Sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, did you want me to include the uh, the rate table as well? Just say as, as, as presented. As presented. As presented. As presented, as presented yeah. <laughs> Very big. Right. Move that the board of commissioners approve the adoption of rates MDPU numbers 279, 280, 281, 282, 283, 284, 285, 286, 287, 288, 289, and 290 dated to be effective July 1st, 2018, on the recommendation of the general manager. Okay, second. Okay. I'm, gonna ask second. The same, I'm gonna ask the same question. On the CAB, they vote, two people voted against this. And I, I seem to get the impression, talking to Jason, when I asked him that they, the two members who voted against it were really opposed to any rate increase. Did I, did I have I interpreted that right? <laughs> there was a discussion about this. Um, there was a concern about, I guess, voting on the plan as presented. So I know two members, they were more, you know, some of, they were actually, for, for some time, there was discussion about whether there should be that magnitude of a increase. And so there were two members who didn't feel that they would change their opinion. One member changed their opinion. And so, so th there was like a question about, you know, why was there, uh, could something be done to reduce the rate of increase? And so then there was clarification saying that most of the charges are passed through and then the amount that actually is the discretionary right. part is really small. And the implications of that were, would be basically on staff. If, if you really had to do something, it would be affecting staff. That, that's my takeaway. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Great. Okay. All, right. All right. We got a second on that? Second. Second. Uh, discussion? We have had some yesterday. Any more discussion? No. Yeah. All right. All those in favor? One abstention. Okay. One abstain. Who abstained? I did. did. Mm -hmm. Oh, you did? Yep. Okay. Board? Uh, 401. Zero, 401. Okay. Yeah. What's the abstention about? What's the abstention about? Uh, I'm concerned about the CAB two members, um, what their objection is. Um, I is just am concerned. One? I think it's one member. There's two members. The two members. Yeah, it's three, three to two. two. Oh, it's I, a thought three to two I thought it was correct. Okay. Yeah. And so I'm concerned about their concern and what what the community is is at, is. Uh, they represent the ratepayers. What the ratepayers are saying to us. So I, I just have a concern <coughs> about that. 
I don't want to vote against it, so I'm going to abstain. Mm -hmm. I don't feel I have full information on what their objection is yet. Okay. Right. Uh, well, we, you know, we faced this in the uh, in the past as well, yeah. where the CAB had uh, not uh, approved uh, rate increases a couple of years ago when we desperately needed it, and we uh, had to move forward and, and approve it. So yeah. this is not unusual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very can, can I just provide some more color on this? Sure. Because I think there had been some discussion about the fact that because I was not aware of all the rate increases at RMMB, but. I think some members felt that there's been, uh, in the recent years, there's been a significant trend of rate increases. And so th that was part of the logic of saying, can the utility do something different in a sense? You know, is there some way, other way of addressing these issues without as much of an increase? And so that, that was their position in saying, you know, can something be done? Mm. Mr. Chair? Yes. Yeah, so I mean, uh, obviously, that's a democratic process, so that, that that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess my only thought would be, uh, you know, from a benchmarking point of view, so it's not a Reading municipal light issue. I mean, uh, the good news is the rate increases, I think, are relatively modest relative to other uh, suppliers of, uh, you know, electricity. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, another data point. So it's not probably not realistic to think there are going to be no increases from year to year. So, but... It's good everyone has a vote, so yeah. we so appreciate your perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah I just, sure. Because I had, they asked me as well. And um, what I had said was there wasn't any, really any rate increases for a long time, which is why the system got the way it was. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the going without any increases happened for decades. Yep. And so now, w you know, we're, we're, we are doing very modest uh, we have a lot of talent in-house, like Hamid, who we're getting a lot of design out of instead of having to hire consultants. Uh, and, and what the RMLD is getting and what the, the system upgrade is getting is worth a lot more than what we're actually paying. I mean, we are getting it done for minimal costs and, and also very small rate increases. We're still in the middle of the pack. We're still 30% less than national grid. Uh, so. Um, you know, I, I guess my point to George was that we can't delay because you already delayed. It, the delay has been done already. Now it's time to act. So um, that was that was my two cents. Yes, Tom. Yeah. So I, I think uh, two things. I think that's a good point, and probably when we have to go through approval process for rate increases in the future, it's probably good. And maybe that was it, it, in those discussions. It would be good to serve up competitive rate increases and where we fit because that's data that's very important. Mm -hmm. The other suggestion is I know it was very helpful to the board if the cab hasn't already been through the new renovations and engineering and see some of the technology. I think that would also shed some light on what we're really trying to accomplish, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, yeah. how yeah, the Jason, Jason was there yesterday, was of course. Oh, yeah. Right. But I mean, if, if the other ones, yeah. the other members have it, it would be good. Okay. Okay. Uh, Dave Talbot reporting on the April 18th meeting. Uh, yeah, no. I did the board yeah, meetings. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I think Viv. Just stick right to number 11. Number 11. Number 11. Oh, yes. Yeah, we took care of 10 already last yeah. night. That's true. Okay. Okay. I just have two items. Uh, we just uh, we had the high school uh, art contest last week, um, and we named uh, five winners. Correct. Uh, each of them were theme related, uh, but we we gave everyone basically a second a second place prize, and then we waited to ask the board to pick the art that was going to be on the annual cover. Um, we like to present art that that speaks to the RMLD mission. Um, and we like to do it so to save money. And um, so I w I'd like to announce what what was the, uh, got the most votes. Mm. Drum roll. And the, the winner is? <laughs> the envelope, please. The, uh, <laughs> the Environmental Inspiration Award. I told you, I told you. And it's by Megan Corum. Very nice. And Get that uh, zoomed in on by RCTV here. Yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. 
Excellent. Right. And then, uh, you know, to do Megan Quorum justice, um, she's from Reading Memorial High School. She's grade 11. The title of it is Growing a Sustainable Future, and I'd like to read what she wrote. I chose to focus on the Community Solar Program for my art because I think it's an excellent project. I'm very impressed by the accessibility, efficiency, and sustainability of the program. In my artwork, I chose to draw the Community Solar Program as a tree to represent that it is good for the environment. The symbol of the tree also shows that the program and its members depend on each other, just like the roots and the leaves are both indispensable parts of the tree. The bright colors convey the hopefulness and promise of the program. So yeah. on behalf of the RMLD, uh, we'd like to thank you, Megan. We hope that, that you're watching uh, and you get first place prize. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that applause is from Megan and all the winners, yeah, all five of them. Mr. Chairman, I, I attended yes. the award ceremony last week, and quite a few. Uh, she read one write-up. There were several write-ups on each of the pictures that were very creative, very innovative. Uh, and, you know, you, every everybody who had the picture there was a winner. Right. <laughs> yes. Great. Well, Great comment. Last year, we actually did put the other ones in the annual report. We made them a little smaller, and we put the write-ups. But this will be on the cover. But for the ones that were winners, I, I think that it, the towns should be able to see them and, and also the kids be able to call it up on the website and, and see their artwork. So all five will be in the annual yeah, report? Yeah, we'll put all five in the yeah. annual report. That's great. Right. Yeah. Nice we one. all live up to Megan's idealism. Yes. Right. Yes. Someday. Right. right. Yes. <laughs> well, and I'd like to add, I think, that was particularly uh, appropriate because we've been discussing solar and having, to your point, we have great mm -hmm. expectations. So it was very timely and very uh, local and very green. Megan, maybe we'll get a solar panel on the roof of your school someday. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> that was a good pitch. <laughs> I think I guess it might be the installer. <laughs> Okay, I think we're going on to number 12. Is that oh, no, I, I oh, oh you saw you have, you have more stuff. I okay, would good. like to ask permission to attend the, um, the NEPA conference this year. Um, you want me to read the motion? Sure. sure. Yeah. Move that the RMLD Board of Commissioners approve Ms. O'Brien's travel to and attendance at the NEPA conference to take place from August 19th through 22nd in North Falmouth, Mass. Second. Second. All right. Discussion? All those in favor? Motion passes five to zero. Who's going? Do we know who's going from the board yet at this point? I'm going. Uh, I'm going. No, I'm going. You're going. You're going. Uh, Expecting yeah, I've already, to. Yes. I've already registered the rooms. The room is already. I've already booked the rooms. So okay. I did that in January. Good. <laughs> Good planning. <laughs> Good planning, Phil. Phil does everything yeah. in January. <laughs> <laughs> you can talk Dave, about that later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm planning to go. I have not made my plans. Okay, yet. so yeah. it looks Fine. like we'll be well represented. If you need Tracy to help with uh, at least reserving the rooms, let her know. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. All in favor? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that motion carried <laughs> five to zero as well. Yeah, thank you. Without discussion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And in the upcoming cab uh, meeting, that's on the agenda to invite the cab to come as well. So. Excellent. Yeah. Yep. Great. Okay. Is there any more to the general manager's report? Uh, no, All right. Thank you very much. And are we going to do the power supply report? Why are you yeah, right, right from there is fine. Do you want to sit there? Do you, do, it? Do you want me to? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, I do. Yes. Yeah, we can go. We'll move around here. We can be flexible, Hamid and James. Thank you. We're a flexible board. <laughs> okay. So the, this report is for the month of March. Uh, the first slide, you see the capital improvement projects. These are the projects that you approved last year. You see the percent compla uh, completion, uh, overall, uh, what we spent in March, the year-to-date actual, and then what was budgeted, and the remaining balance on the far right. The second slide, basically, it's showing you the routine capital construction. So these are the pole settings, overhead underground uh, uh, constructions, and the pole damages, the station, the hazmat, oil spills, porcelain cutouts, lighting, storm trouble underground subdivisions, animal guard installations, and miscellaneous capital projects, which we spent $152,939 in the month of March. That brings year to date to $1,131,537. The 
The next slide shows you the, what the spending in the month of March for the facilities, the IRD James group, as well as the ITE Wendy's group. So you see the, what the spending been in the month of March and what was budgeted, as well as how much is remaining on the far right. So all in all, for all divisions, we spent uh, $659,288 in the month of March. That brings the year to date to $4,595,933. And the remaining balance for the rest of the year is $3,089,588. So we are moving right along with the project, making great progress. The routine maintenance, you see the list of those routine maintenance projects we're making basically across all the categories we're making great progress these are the preventative maintenance the quarterly inspection feeders are going well we haven't found any new problems the manual inspection porcelain cutouts so they're all uh, going very well and uh, the, the we're getting a lot done accomplished across those uh, categories the routine uh, maintenance the next uh, Slide that's uh, the tree trimming. We did 12 spans in the month of March. Year to date is 825,825 eight span through the March, basically. The substation maintenance, we haven't found any uh, hot spot. We do the infrared scan at the parks as well as the substation. No problems have been found yet. Uh, and the underground sub substation upgrades, the, the ones that you know you see, the recently completed uh, Crestwood State. North Reading, Aspen Road in North Reading, and Long Hill Lane in North Reading. The ones uh, you see the list of the projects that they are in progress underneath. These are the ones that they're ongoing now. We're trying to, as part of those underground uh, uh, overhaul <laughs> that we were talking about, the $350,000 that we re requested uh, spending in order to uh, be proactive rather than reactive to redo the entire uh, uh, construction, reconstruct the area. The next poll shows the usual that you see the, the devil poles, the ownership as well as the custodial. Uh, the ownership is 50-50 between Reading and Verizon. Custodial for, uh, for RMLD is the uh, North Reading as well as half the Reading. The rest of the areas are Verizon said areas. <coughs> The next uh, slide. This uh, is your favorite slide, I that's think. That's my favorite slide. You remember? <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. It shows how much you <laughs> we're spending. In the Linfield, North Reading, Reading, and Wilmington, you see the, you know, we are doing very well with the transfers as well as remo removing the pole butts on those. So the construction, got more coming up. So these numbers are moving targets up and down, but we are making great, great progress on transfers as well as removing the pole butts on the streets. Uh, the next slide is the reliability indices. You see that all the indices, we are well below the regional and the national averages. So we're making, uh, that shows the health of the system and how well we are doing basically with handling the outages. And uh, con considering having three, four storms in a row, we haven't been doing right that bad. Uh, the last slide shows you the causes of the outages in the March of 2018, and as you could see, the blue shows the annual average from two, uh, 2013 to 2017, five years average, and uh, the red shows you where we are today, I mean, up to March in 2018. And I guess there was a question about the tree trimming, uh, the last time you see that the five years average been like 57 and in the month of March with the storm and everything, you know, we've had. Uh, That's a pretty dramatic slide. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. We're making great progress on those. So the tree trimming is a good program and it's paying back. We still got a lot to do, but you know, at least we are on the right track. That's what it shows. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. It is. So that concludes my report. I, I was done five minutes. Excellent. Okay. Nice. Thank you, <laughs> Mead. Uh, questions, questions for Hamid? Anybody have any questions for Hamid? Uh, okay. Just to oh, yeah. repeat, that's a great, uh, I mean, that, that's a pretty dramatic change from year over year. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Great. Good. Thank you, Hamid. Thank you so much. Yes. Can we do Wendy next? Wendy, you want to come next? Yeah. We're going completely out of order today. <laughs> Okay, good evening again. 
Good evening. Good evening. I am presenting um, March financials for the first nine months of fiscal year 18. So I just want to go over some highlighted comments here. Unrestricted cash of $14.6 million covers less than two months of operating expenses at the end of March. Our accounts receivable are remaining at 97% current, which I mentioned is up to 90 days. Um, net plant increased by $3.8 million as compared to March 31st, uh, 2017. So you can see we're making all of our progress there. Base revenue increased by 1% compared to last year with a decrease of kilowatt hours currently of 2.6%. Purchase power fuel expense exceeds purchase power fuel revenue by $2.3 million and purchase power capacity and transmission expenses exceed purchase power capacity and transmission revenue by about $146,000. The operating and maintenance expenses remain under budget by 1% uh, at the end of March and I will stand by the fact that that could be related to timing because I still believe we might come in un over budget due to the storms. Mm -hmm. So we're still getting some mutual aid uh, invoices in mm -hmm. that are being paid in April and May. So I mean, you know. From February, March. From yeah, March, right, yeah. mostly, yeah. yes. Yeah. March, yeah. So, you know, and not everybody's quick on the um, sending things in and getting everything done. So mm -hmm. we're doing the best we can to get them paid as soon as we can so that they stay in the months that they belong in. But we don't always have full control. Okay, so the next slide is just a snapshot of cash, all of the different cash accounts and in our investments. So I just wanted to point out that 67% uh, of cash is restricted for one reason or another. That means we cannot touch it. It is reserved for that particular um, purpose. So we have 33% or a third of our cash which is being used as a regular uh, ongoing checkbook, if you will, to um, fund our operating expenses. As I said, we do not even have two months of operating fund to cover operating expenses. Hmm. That's a pretty cool slide. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is. That's a pretty I cool like slide. Yeah. <laughs> nice I must slide. admit. Yeah. We accountants like pie charts, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, the next slide shows, uh, I just wanted to kind of put into perspective. I use seven years versus six simply to get actual numbers from FY17, considering we're still in FY18 and these are projected. Uh, this is base revenue compared to operating expenses. This is uh, less power, of course. This is just operating and maintenance expenses. So we're looking at the um, base revenue increase of about 20.37%, while operating expenses are 21.27% increase over the seven-year span. So there's only 0.90% difference uh, between revenue and operating expenses. So as we are increasing revenue, we're spending at the same level, so we're not taking in any extra money that uh, you know, all the money is being reinvested into the infrastructure and into the, um, the operations of the business. Okay. And then the last slide is just uh, showing you the comparison of FY17 actual as compared to FY18 uh, through, through March 31st and what the budget should be at March 31st. So as you can see, like I said, we're still 1% under. Um, we're talking uh, very minute dollars here, about $150,000 under budget. But um, I already mentioned what I think is going to happen. So we still have 25% of the budget remaining, and um, hopefully, hopefully we make it within the budget numbers. You, what do you think will be will be over budget by 1%? Well, I projected with, with uh, yesterday's operating budget that we were going to be over by about 2.7%. Two, yeah. Uh, because of the March storm cost of over 700000 I believe. Um, but, you know, there's no way to, you know, totally exactly. predict that. Right. Yeah. So okay. Good. that concludes my presentation. Great. Any questions? Great. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Why do you know? No, thank you. Thank Wendy. you. Great. Okay. And Wendy. finally, we get to have Jane come up. Power supply. <laughs> um, just to report on a couple of community uh, events. By the way, that could have been an art uh, winner. Uh, yeah, I thought it was right. springy for yeah. for <laughs> May. <laughs> so uh, why did we get to consider that one? Um, uh, I can't. Uh, the operational assistant did that, so I can't take credit for that. Um, just a couple of communication community relations on Sunday, June third. 
uh, North Reading Town Day will occur um, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. and that will be at the Ipswich River Park. Reading Friends and Family Day um, will be on Saturday, June 16th from 1030 to 3 and that's at Birch Meadow. Um, and then just other community <coughs> relations. I mentioned um, a couple months ago that we're, our new website is very close to being complete uh, with a potentially launched uh, date by the end of this month. Um, and so we're anxiously awaiting that and looking forward to it because it will be um, mobile friendly, which our current website currently is not. Um, Anything else we should look forward to um, on the new website that are especially noteworthy? Um, I think it's going to be a lot um, cleaner. Um, it's going to be more business-like as opposed to um, it's, it's very antiquated right now. Um, the fact that it will be easy to access um, whether you're a residential customer or a business co commercial. Um, so we've, we've kind of made it very user-friendly, we believe. Right. Um, and Joyce is heading that project and she's doing a really great job with that. Super. And then we're also going to be beginning our promotion in our, of the our Shred the Peak campaign. Um, last year we had people opt into an email to participate in that. So we'll be um, coming up with some press releases, email <coughs> campaigns, et cetera, for people to get involved and to, to come together as a community to help us reduce our peak demand during this summer uh, upcoming period. So we hope people uh, actively participate. Um, just to go over my slides, um, we looked at quarter uh, three for the fiscal year. Uh, this particular uh, chart looks at kilowatt hour sales um, from 2016 to 2018. Um, as we can see in um, January was a much colder and we had higher sales in 2018. If you compare that to 27 and 16, February was pretty flat and consistent. Um, and the March were uh, slightly below uh, the previous two years. Um, but overall, uh, for, the, for the quarter, it was a fairly flat in comparison to 17 um, and a little higher than 16. Um, however, as Wendy did indicate in her overall presentation, we're down a little more than 2% for overall, uh, which would mean that quarters one and two were significantly lower. Um, and that's where it usually impacts us from July till December. Um, that's pretty much what's causing us to be in excess of 2% lower in our kilowatt hour sales. This next slide looks at the purchase power capacity and transmission revenue. Um, as you can see uh, throughout the quarter, uh, we've increased um, steadily um, from 2016 to 2017. There was about a 446,000 increase. Uh, that was primarily due to transmission increases. However, if you look from 17 to 18, the, the increase in quarter three was about $1.86 million. Um, and the big driver on that is the uh, NEMA capacity zone increase that we've talked about during the budget process. Um, and that cleared at $14.99 a kilowatt year. And that's what's driving um, that increase in 2018. Um, the next slide, or the, the last slide, uh, looks at our fuel cost, our capacity costs, and our transmission costs for January, February, and March, which is quarter three. And it looks at 2016 to compare to 2018. Um, so again, as I spoke about the capacity, uh, you know, from 16 to 17, there was about a 291,000 increase. But when we look at the next slide, these are our actual costs as opposed to our revenues. This last slide was our revenues. There was about a $1.5 million increase in capacity charges for that quarter. Um, in transmission, uh, it's a steady increase, 250,000 from 16 to 17, and then an increase of 353,000 from 17 to 18. And then in fuel, uh, there was actually a decrease um, from 16 to 17 of 372. And then in 17 to 18, it was about 1.4 million increase. Um, and that it was primarily due to January's, the load was higher in January, and that cold spell that we had. Um, had significant uh, cost impacts on us as well as additional hydro generation that we've um, um, contracted for at a higher cost. And that completes my presentation. Excellent. Thank you. Yep. Right. Thank you, Jane. You're welcome. Thank you, Jane. Any questions for Jane? No. Thanks. All right. Great. Jane, do you want to stay up and do the. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Paul.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. just had a question. Um, I mean, I'm just thinking, I mean, in general, energy prices are going up. And so I just, it's just, just like, I think if you look over the last few, last three years now, I think at least I I'll think of energy prices primarily in terms of oil prices. But how do you see that when you make the budget and plan for it? Uh, I just, I'm, I'm just want to make sure there's no surprises there in terms of energy prices. So any thoughts on how you factor in sure. what's happening in the market? Sure. Um, in New England, um, gas is the typical right. uh, fuel source uh, that we trend to. Historically, if you look back 20 years, it was more oil based. Yes. Um, now it's more gas based. And what, what's that, what, uh, what complication that's presented is in the winter time, because we're at the end of the pipeline, uh, we're in a constrained zone. Um, so that, whereas historically, um, all of our concern was during the summertime, when, 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 when air condition load would be increases, that's where we would see high volatility in prices, and we tend to lock in our, our, our supply, so to minimize that volatility and that risk. Now we've transitioned because of this new situation with gas being the main driver of fuel and then the constraint occurring in the winter months. So now from December to February, that has posed more volatility within, within the energy markets. So our strategy to do that would be to secure more contracts to cover our load and keep less of an open position so that we're not subject to those pre um, volatility and those prices. Um, and so the, the only factor that you, you, you would what could influence that further is if, if you're off in your load. So if people are using more than you have forecasted, then you're subject to that volatility. So we're looking at mechanisms to help us balance that and to protect us from the high swings. So typically how much do you contract about? What percentage? Uh, usually in those, in those most volatile months, we're 95% covered. Um, so it's, we're, we're open very little to the spot market. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. It'd, it'd be great if we could have a, a bigger pipeline, but, uh, <laughs> but it's a, we all that's suffer that's from the NIMBY thing, yes. you know, not in my backyard. Mm, uh, yep. Exactly. And Jane, do you have uh, something you want to buy here? Correct. Does somebody want to read the somebody motion? Somebody want to read the motion? Oh, where is it? Um, it's uh, number 15. 15, I can, I can yeah. read it. Yeah. Um, um, move move that the IF, IFB-44 electrical services for the removal of load control modules, LCM, and associated parts be awarded to Alltech Electric for $83,400 pursuant to MGL Chapter 149, MGL Chapter 30, Section 39M as the lowest responsive and responsible bidder on the recommendation of the general manager. Second. Okay. Second. Just, yep. just be aware it should be a electrician services, not electrical. Electrician services. Oh, elect okay, yeah, it's, oh, it's written there. Electrician, you're yeah. right. Yeah. The electrician. Audience, Thank understand. you. Right. Mm -hmm. Thousands that watch on cable TV. <laughs> so I can just give you yeah, a little, little background, background, background on yeah. this. Yeah. Um, so the RMLD has installed about approximately 300 uh, sequentric load control modules in the house to control the water heater. Uh, those units have uh, reached their useful life. Um, those were installed by an electrician and those have to be removed by an electrician. Uh, so we sent this bid out to 20 companies. We, we received bids for six, uh, by, through six electricians. And the removal um, would constitute the removal of the load control module and the installation of a splice box. And uh, also part of the electrical code is if you cannot see the control panel um, or the electrical panel, a disconnect switch has to be put in that, in, in that spot. And so that equipment will be returned to the RMLD. Uh, the RMLD will be, will be contacting customers and scheduling appointments, and then we'll be working with the electrician who, re, who is awarded this bid. Okay. So how much is this per unit? I'll just give everybody some quick math here. It's on the spreadsheet that's attached to it's the- it's, um, on the, it's on the table. Right so the, the electrician is required to get the electrical permit. Um, 
It's estimated that on average the uh, removal will take one hour to complete, um, as well as um, the removals could be done uh, both during uh, the, the work week as well as potentially on the weekends, depending on customers' availability. Is this job, is this somebody doing this now? No. No. Okay. So this is a new, new service completely. Okay. Correct. And why can't they just be left on or just de, de sort of, I, know, I understand they're not working anymore or they're not. It's a, it's a liability for the RMLD to have e our equipment in someone's house. Um, when we have the equipment in the house and if, if say the water heater is 15 years old um, and the water heater goes yep. or is not working, uh, the customer automatically would call the RMLD to say, your device is not working, I don't have hot water. Um, then we have to get an electrician to go out and test the device. And, and again, it, it creates an issue for the customer as well as for the RMLD. And is there any other alternative load control device that, because this was held up as a big deal, so this is a way to cut the peak. Yep, we're, we're, uh, uh, my group is actually working on an RFP to look at other technologies and proposals that we can replace this technology with. So we're soliciting proposals for residential load control, uh, not necessarily isolated to water heating. It could be pool pumps, it could be air conditioning, et cetera. Um, and we're working, we're hoping to get that RFP out. But if we're sending people into these houses to take these things off and at the same time we might have another contract later to put something else on, it would seem to me we should do it at the same time in case there's an alternative technology that we could put on. Yeah, I think the, the intent of the department is um, to restructure the program where we would rebate um, technologies for the customers to install. It becomes very um, challenging for us right. to we'll coordinate with um, homeowners to have our equipment inside their homes, et cetera. So I, uh, the RFP will look at technologies that we will investigate, have customers purchase, have them install it, and we will simply uh, create a rebate structure. Uh, one example that I'm aware of is in Concord, where they have electric uh, heaters called Steps heaters, which I'm sure you're familiar with. They're basically, they, they store heat overnight, and you release the heat during the day. And Concord went in and replaced the modules on them so that they could do, they could control them remotely. A, a better way than they're doing now. So they were going into houses and installing improved control systems that were digital on these steps heaters to replace some kind of broken system. So the analogy to me is they did go into the house to take something out, but they put something better on. I don't know. I mean yeah, again, I, I, again, all I can say is I think the, the approach that we'd like to take is to give customers optionality. Um, and so if we find a technology that as long as it meets the criteria, we would allow the homeowners to participate, to install them. It could be a simple timer on their, on their water heater that they could put in um, that we would create that rebate for, um, which we would incentivize them to, to actually do the installation portion. But why not offer it? I mean, we're in there. I know we don't want to be responsible for equipment in people's houses. I get that. But while we're in there now, why don't we put the timer on now? And it's their equipment. It's the it's the it's the homeowner's equipment, and we and we we put it in. They say, well, we offer to put it in while we're here. We're taking our thing out. We're offering to put a timer on, which you can control, and then it's theirs. I mean, it's just an opportunity. We're in. We're now going into 300, 400 people's houses that at great cost in the past. We put these things on. It was a peak shaving device. We want to shave mm -hmm. the peak. Can we're, we're in the a, I mean, yeah. a lot of these, the customers were shutting off the timers right. and still getting the discounted rate. I understand. Okay. No, it's I understand just, that. I'm not sure that we really want to be having the liability of installing things into customers' ho homes. Maybe we can have a, a discussion just on that. Um, I know Concord does certain things, but um, there's well, a just one that I know of. There could be many no. others. I mean, we're, uh, utilities do get involved with load on ACs and water heaters and pool pumps and a few things now. It's not just concrete. I don't know. It just I, seems I sense that we're not ready, though, uh, Dave, to yeah, think of an alternate technology to put in. I mean, we can talk about timers, but uh, what kind of timer uh, has it been 
checked out yet? Uh, have we done any testing on it so that we're not compounding the situation? I mean, I, I don't disagree with you. I think if we're sending someone in, uh, if we can replace it uh, with a new format um, that uh, gets us out of what Pauline just mentioned. I get that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's great. But Jane, how, how long would it take to, after we place, if say we, we pass this now, and we get this equipment, how long would it take to remove all of these? What would, your, um, what, would, what would be the plan? How long would it yeah, take to go so through the Yeah, so depending on the manpower that all tech can supply, if we assume six, uh, removal of six uh, units per week, it would take close to a year to get everything out. If, so if, they're, if they provide us with more manpower, you know, it could, it, we could do it in a shorter period of time. Yeah, so we may have some time. To we, we have time. Here's my request. I mean, we, we always approve, approve everything that comes before us. Can we table this for a month? And can we just look into the idea and get a report back on whether it's possible to offer homeowners while we're in there at their discretion that we can give them a timer right on the spot with us not responsible for it but we give them the option while we're in there this one shot opportunity to do that and with the understanding that this isn't our equipment it's theirs but we're offering it to them because they're not going to do it otherwise we're going to wait years and offer rebates and people won't won't do them but here, here we're doing this let's use the opportunity 400 water heaters going off at once is Wait, like a can megawatt. Can I just ask something? Yeah. So are, are we connecting up to them in controlling it? No, because I know that we're backing out of the idea that we're installing stuff in people's houses and that we're in the houses. I get that. I get why that's problematic. I do. Okay, I mean, so you if, know, we wouldn't be if controlling the timer it. catches on fire, are we liable? You know, the thing is, this is just coming to us, and what I'm, what I'm saying is, can we have a month to think about whether we can offer homeowners while we're in there to give them a, a device that's theirs, but that while we're there, we can put it in and they sign something saying it's ours, you're not responsible. But we have a device and we carry on with the spirit of the thing while we're taking the trouble to be in the house. Offer them the opportunity to just put a timer on. And that yes, it's no, we don't control it from there on, it's theirs. Maybe they'll never use it, maybe they'll shut it off, but it'll be there on 400 electric water heaters that for years we held up as a model of peak shaving. And we just, it's just, you know, here's this chance to do something. Let, let me just add, if I may, ask a, yeah. an, an, another side of the question. Have, have we had any issues with the equipment inside of the house up to date um, from a liability perspective? Yes, we have. We they, have. They're, they're at the end of the useful life and we've had some failures of the units and when the unit fails how does it fail is it great there's been a variety of different failures um, some of them just stop working some of them um, does that mean we can't communicate with them um, and, and so they ju they've, they're just at their end of their of their life right but but they haven't uh, caused a, a fire or something like that that we we know of I don't think there's been um, been there, there's been some there's been some melting so there's been some things happening melting. <laughs> melting. Uh, they're, they're in a they're in a, they're in a um a rated box however you know there has been some that the box has come back s melted and and some issues hmm. <laughs> one one liability suit <laughs> yes that's all yeah all right i'm sorry i, I know we can always be scared, you know, throw out the scare story, but I think that while we're in there, we should be offering homeowners the opportunity that the same guy is putting the same two screws and we're getting a timer on there that the homeowner can control. It's not rocket science. And that that's, that this, that that should be something that we should see for a month from now. Can we do that? And just have this guy, this low bidder say, I'll add that to my thing and we give him whatever, just come with a plan that we're, we're not just throwing away this stuff without any replacement while we're in there. Great, and with the understanding that the homeowner would be responsible, but we give them the offer. So we it's just offer. Yeah, okay. we have well, yeah. okay, so I don't know. One good thing about what Dave's saying mm -hmm. is that these are the 400 homeowners that have shown an interest in this area, so they'd probably be the same pool, to be the same pool of people that would take action in some other way. But maybe. Can I say something? I mean, yes. we're, we're looking into appliances are changing. They're all going to become smart appliances, okay? 
and people are going to start buying spot, smart appliances so they can control them from their iPhone. Right. Okay. So like their heating system already. Like right. their heating system, their water heating system. So we would much rather spend the money on something that they're going to be able to use with the technology going forward so that they can do a whole house control as opposed to a timer on a water heater, which is probably going to get changed out, and, and we're not we're not getting the bang for the buck. You know what I mean? We want we want to have the whole house like under a Nest system or something like that, that's controlling the all of the appliances, so that you're getting peak reduction with more than just the water heater. I don't think you go into Home, home Depot. The water heaters are not smart motor heaters. They're just water heaters. It's an opportunity. I guess I've, I've made my request, and so if the, my colleagues want to join me in uh, giving us a month to think about whether we can offer homeowners an alternative while we're taking the trouble to be there of equipment that they would control and own and we wouldn't be liable for. I would like to see us do that. I'm saying that there's systems that you buy and that there's pieces that come with it, and this one goes on the water heater, and this one goes on the refrigerator. Whatever those options might be, that we have that included in this project. Even if it's just handing the person the thing, but we're in these houses and you know, give it, take the opportunity to replace this or offer people a replacement, even if it's on their own volition to put it in, that that, that gets done. That's my, I don't know exactly how that, what that piece of equipment is, I'm just saying. Is that something that can be figured out in another month? You know, it could even be the same bid, it's just that while we're there, we, you know, it's there's a, there's another another hand handing people something um, instead of oh we're pulling this out and sewing it back up and it was a failure and maybe someday we'll replace it with something. Let's have it be something that's at that same interaction with the customer. Something happens at that moment. That yeah. yeah any other comments from the, the board? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, John, ahead. John, go ahead. No, I guess I would guess I would defer Jane to you in terms of. Uh, you know, the level of urgency we're not involved in the day-to-day -day operation does, you know, if we look at uh, moving the uh, vote to the June meeting, does that, you know, what, how does that impact the, the operations here? Does that create difficulties or I don't know where we are in the process? Is that? I, I would prefer to call in to s in terms of uh, the, uh, how the liability affects the department. Like I did say, we are working on an RFP yep. looking at the entire residential program, yep. um, and we don't know how that's going to come out. And again, we're, we're, we're hoping technology is there so that we'll be able to have software in place that will know if people are sh uh, you know, shredding the peak. Colleen, what do you think? Is it I, I, time, time sensitive? You well, based on... Yeah, we were advised to take these out as soon as possible, and we had started to go into one direction, but it, it got to be so large that we had to bid it because of the price. Um, I don't know exactly what timer, but you know, if very quickly we can buy timers and hand them out when the electrician is there, I don't have a problem with that. Um, so we could do these things simultaneously? With a disclaimer just saying, you know, thank you for participating, um, and uh, if if you'd like to continue to control your water heater, you can use this, but I don't know what this is. We'd, we'd have to look at it. But the, we will be doing this for a year, so we have time to weave that in if we find something that sounds like. Are you going to say something? They will be getting the rebate. Is that correct? I mean, if we take it out, they'll lose the rebate as well. Most of the people are still getting a rebate, but they're not connected. They've disconnected it they themselves. They've disconnected. So the statistics right. so show that they've disconnected. Correct, correct. <laughs> then, <laughs> I mean, if we've, we've got a liability on one hand and the people aren't using them and we're nobody's, giving them a nobody's rebate. Nobody's arguing with taking them out and stopping the rebate. It's about using this interaction to hand them, like Colleen said, hand them something else. Nobody's arguing with the, the program coming to the end of its useful life and the rebates coming to the end of their useful life. Uh, the, the only problem, Dave, is that most people have disconnected them, which means they don't... I, they, they don't weren't they working, right? No. They disconnected them because it, you know, I don't, I felt like their creature, creature habits weren't aligning with yeah. whether the water was hot when they needed it to be. I think it was a good concept and I think they wanted to save money, but I think when it came down to them wanting hot water, uh, they, they didn't want to be. Yet they're still getting the benefit? 
they w they're still getting the benefit today. Right. They didn't call us and say we disconnected. Okay. Um, well, all right. I guess we have to, at this point, take a vote. And it seems like we can do what Dave's suggesting. If we find something along the way, it's going to take a year to get in everybody's house. We can add that to our program, right? So we can vote today on this and. If you're not adding to anything to an electrician's duty, other than just handing something something, then you, the bid still stands. Okay. They still can start working on getting them out. Um, Dave, what's your thoughts? All right. Um, I mean. I'll vote against this because um, I, I don't see that plan in place now, so that's how I'll go. But you're the chairman, so carry on, I guess. Uh, I'd like to see, I would like to see us when we're in somebody's, I, I've already said what I said, so. Okay. Okay, All right. can I make one more yeah. comment? Yeah. So if, if someone's not using the devices, but they are getting the rebate, does it become a zero-sum game to basically take it out and take away the rebate? In other words, sir getting a rebate of X number of dollars per month, right? So does that cover the cost over the course of a year of us coming in and taking it out per the bid that we're talking about Approximately here? Approximately it does. They and get approximately $220. So it's credit. a zero-sum game. We take it out and uh, it doesn't cost, doesn't us, cost us a thing to take it out. And we, But we know who the people are, Dave, to your point, right. that we go back and say, what was the inconvenience that you turned the thing off in the first place? I mean, I would love to do a survey while they're there, but they're not going to do that. And you, but we know who the people are, and so it becomes a ready you know, uh, audience for something new. If it's a zero-sum game, I see no reason not to do it and get rid of the liability that we face. That makes a lot of sense. It's still, though, I still feel like when we're in there, we should be handing them something. And, um, you know, with probably with a sentence in the, in the thing, it could have said, if you want us, we'll put this in, but it's on you to take care of them here. But that sentence wasn't in the whatever, so we'd have to rebid it. But because that's not concrete now, I still feel like I would like to see that be part of our program, that we're given our peak you know, issues, that we we're doing things um, when we have the opportunity. You know, So I, what you said makes perfect sense, John. I mean, I don't, I don't debate that. I still think we should be handing people an alternative. And it sounds like we still could add this to this program at some point, right? If we vote on this today, we could still potentially add that in, whether it be a yeah, month from now. We can't tell this electrician to, if the homeowner wants it, to put the other thing in. It's not in the scope, is that right? No. Can we take a vote? Yeah, let's take a vote. I have a separate question. All right. When, no, when Go ahead. ahead. Um, have we done our due diligence? We checked out the references on these on the, the bidder and their we financial have. strength. We have, and we've gotten all positive uh, references from the, the people we contacted. Okay, very good. And the work has to be checked by the warrant inspector. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Does that all let me just ask. So, what we're asking to be added, I mean, does that it really doesn't impact the scope of work, does it? If an electrician has to install it, and and my recommendation is, I I really am not in favor of us installing anything in people's homes. I'm just not. You know, if you want to, you know, tell me to do it anyways, I will. But that's what I'm telling you. I've been doing this long enough. It's it's best not. You know, I tell the linemen. I don't want you down on the panels. I don't want you touching the circuit breakers. I know you want to help people, but you can't put your hands on stuff that doesn't belong to you. It's just not a good practice. And, you know, p different municipals were doing it, and, and some was working fine, and some it wasn't. And, you know, I just think the policy here should be that, that we go to alternative measures to reduce the peak. I agree. We just don't have the alternative in front of us for this right now. But we're voting to get rid of something without having an alternative. So that's my issue. Take a okay. vote. All right. Yeah. All those in favor of this motion? Motion carries four to what's that? You didn't do oh, oh, I know. All those again. No, we, we always are four to one. Yeah. But right. <laughs> four to one. Four to one. Four to one. Four to one. The right, let the record show. Okay. And then let's go to general discussion. We have some uh, board meetings coming up June 21, July 19. And then we have the NEPA conference September 21. No, August. August. 
and then we have our next one September 21st. And then CAB meetings, um, May 16th, John Stempeck. I'd like to ask if I could perhaps switch, and I talked to yeah. Phil about it, but I, 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 if I could possibly switch with Tom, actually for June. That's Tom, are you okay with that? Uh, I, I, I can't, I uh, just made a commitment that night, otherwise I would, John, on the 16th so of May 16th. Oh, so you're, you're not gonna be there that night, you mean, June 20th? Oh, what? Are you gonna? He's wondering you if ask? you could do the 16th. No, I can't. So I'm saying okay. I'm not available ah, for the 16th. Okay. You can do the 20th. I can do the 20th. Okay. Can someone else switch with John on the 16th? I, I'm more than happy to switch, John. Still. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm looking, but I'm looking at July 18th, where I'm going to be away. Okay. Possibly going to be away. So we want to do a, a three-way switch. I mean, I could take yours, and then you could take June and Tom. Could you take the July? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Three Great. corner deal. The Three corner so deal. <laughs> so I'm gonna take June, right? Yeah. It's June. Right. So I'm gonna take. I'll take May next week. Yeah. Well, and Tracy, you'll you'll email me. So email me. I hope. Yeah. And then uh, John will take the 20th of June, and Tom will take Tom. July the right. 18th. Yep. All right. I'll have a player to be named later. <laughs> Good. Excellent. Can I? Uh, yes. So. I know we've already voted on the uh, pr previous discussion point, but I think if we want to add it to another agenda item, I think Dave's question uh, still leaves a lot of discussion in terms of what we can do, and I, I respect, Colleen, your opinion on not wanting to install, but I think the fundamental question is what should we be thinking about doing? Right. You know, because it, you know, it does look like, okay, we have a, a Shave the Peak program and, you know, all of a sudden, it doesn't do what we wanted. One of to our do. solutions didn't work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, none of us, I think, believe we shouldn't be getting more uh, energy efficiency. So uh, part of the issue for me is that I struggle with is if they didn't use it to some other. And maybe John's point is, you know, uh, and maybe it's independent of the elect electrician going in there. Maybe we need to. We got 400 people. Maybe we need to, on a reasonable basis, survey and find out what what is the issue. I mean, we got a lot of people who I think are green. Yeah. Mm -hmm. conscious, yeah, right? Get some data or some information. Yeah. Make an right. Intelligent so I, mean, I, get, I, I know there's lots of stuff on the plate, but I do think when we have issues like that, it, you know, and I can understand the urgency f to run the, the business here, so mm -hmm. that's why I voted the way I did, but I do think there's merit in taking a step back and making sure we understand the, you know, what happened and is there something else we could do, because this issue is not a new issue <laughs> for us, right, in no. terms of, and the bigger issue is, you know, even if we could do it, it's only 400 <laughs> Which is what percentage of our customers? A very small number. One percent. But yeah. if you shut off 400 hot water heaters at the same time, that's like a half a megawatt. Yeah, except 400 are not even I connected. Know. I know. Yeah, yeah. I'm no, saying I'm saying the but theoretical maximum of what the benefit you get is a half a megawatt, and if mm -hmm. 200 happen to be on and they don't get they don't they get cut off at the right time, that's a quarter of yeah. a megawatt. It's a lot. I mean, that's mm, yeah. worth real money in, on a peak day. Yeah. So, and if you could somehow expand it. It's, there's a huge potential there. Yeah. I, I so think your comment was well positioned. I think we don't have to say we're not going to proceed with a way to solve the uh, bigger issue, which is getting those replaced, even if we can't do it ideally at the same time. Which and maybe it's done a different way completely, right? And, and let's find out what it should be. What, yeah. what, what is that device? Can I, what is that? Right. Can I make a suggestion, actually? How yeah. Do, so here's what I would suggest is that we procure timers, which isn't going to cost much, were they 20 bucks each or something? And it's a separate thing, but we asked this person who we procured the contract to, to give the people this piece of equipment, but on a separate, offer them a separate $50 install to put it in. That's on the homeowner and on them entirely, whether they do it or not. But we're handing somebody, somebody something, and then if it's set from three to seven, it'll never go on from three to seven. I have a hard time seeing why a hot water heater not reheating between three and seven is gonna cause anybody, anything they're gonna ever notice, unless 12 people are taking a shower at 6 p.m. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Well, yeah, uh, you know, I, I, in, in uh, theory, I'm 100% with you. In actionable items, when you hand someone a, a timer, I know people uh, personally who would say, I can do this myself and wire it in and the next thing you know, you know, there, something's on fire, or the house mm -hmm. is burning down, or whatever is yeah. going wrong, and it might be my children, it might be some of my friends, and I don't trust 
that the general public is going to knowing going to know how to do it and will rely on Uncle Jim the quasi electrician to kind of wire it in. And whenever there's a liability lawsuit, they trace everything back to the rivets. I mean, whoever started it had any part to do with it. And so I think it needs to be done, I agree with you, professionally. And we need to have some kind of solution. I think this is just a, a small piece of the whole puzzle. And I think we, we need to b address a bigger piece myself, Dave. Yeah, no, I, I don't think what we're saying conflict. I just think at that moment of interaction, we hand somebody an option and what that option would be and not just go there to rip stuff out. We go there and we have a, there's a communications piece that happens at that same customer interaction where the customer is educated about and there's a, there's a plan of something right there that they can do that we're not responsible for because I get all that. <coughs> that we're not just pulling stuff out and leaving and then hoping that there's an RFP in a year and something else comes up. Like we, we use this moment I, I agree. So, I don't know what thing so it might not be an installation. Yeah. It might I make be a suggestion. Yes. Yeah. We've got the people. We know the audience. Right. We have a form created that would with a self-addressed envelope on it, where people can go through and write in or check off. Did this work for you? Did this not work for you? Did you? Would you like about it? What would you prefer to have? Here are some possible options. Could you please fill this out and just mail it back to us? Thank you very much. You've been receiving the rebate, even though. <laughs> if you have, right. haven't been doing it for a year or more now, would you please do this for us with a self-addressed envelope? So we tap into whether the people are still there. Maybe the house got sold, and maybe the pe new people didn't want to be part of it. I mean, there, there's lots of reasons mm -hmm. that I'm shielded from liability as a board member, right? I'm going to shadow this guy. I'm going to put these things in my socket. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if that's what it takes. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. I think we'll we'll add that to a future board agenda. No, I just want to talk make about it, this. Let's let's yeah. not let the subject yeah. die. Yeah, that's right. I think Tracy's going to put okay. this on the agenda for us to still talk about. It. All right. So um, suggest a motion. Can I say this last motion, or does no. somebody else have to no, do it? Also, All right, uh, Phil. Before, excuse me, Mr. Yes. Chair. Just not for discussion, but just for action. Uh, we still, I think, have a an action to uh, review the. General manager, so I, I, I don't know if that's already on the calendar or not, but we need to get a meeting. We scheduled. need to get that scheduled. Yeah. Okay. So maybe Tracy could help us with that. Tracy, can you help us yeah. schedule that? Or do we already do that? Well, maybe we have it. I just want to make sure I we don't think lose. We got her on there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's my fault, too. You want to take that up now? Uh, uh, just the conversion to the fifth city. Oh, yeah, let's do that. Let's, let's yeah. do the yeah. conversion. Yeah. Yes. Right. So, um, I'll make the motion. Let me make the motion. Okay, but no, we talk, we talking about the I'll general manager review? Right. right. If we go under. Uh, general manager review, um, I have to do. Yeah, it's not off for tonight. Yeah. And then I'll send out. I mean, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So yeah, do 13. Yeah, do 13. Yeah. I'll, I'll move that the RMLD Board of Commissioners approve the RMLD Department's change from a fiscal year to a calendar year, with the change becoming effective January 1st, 2019. Second. On the recommendation of the General Manager. Glad you added that in. Yes. <laughs> and any discussion? I just have oh. a point of clarification. So I mean, isn't a fiscal year, a fiscal year can be July 1 to June 30th or January, December, isn't it? technically the fiscal year of July 1 to June yeah. 30th. Okay. I, I will accept that as fiscal year end from the fiscal year ending June 30 to uh, each year to a calendar year ending we're still December have a 31st year, right? of each year. Yeah. Right. Okay. Point. As okay. part of the motion. Okay. Good okay. Second. All right. Good second. All right. All those in favor? Motion carried 5 Hooray. 0. Hooray. Finally. And now. Finally. <laughs> Finally. Well done. Well done. Good. Oh, you, you wanted that for a long time, huh, Phil? 10 years. 10 years. <laughs> yeah, for wow. those at home, he's not saying the meeting's <laughs> over. He's saying we've got the change oh, yeah. in calendar years. Congratulations, <laughs> Phil. <laughs> Both. And are you going to do the last motion, too, for us? Yeah. Since I'll you're on a roll? Motion. Yeah. Move that the Army will be Board of Commissioners go into executive session to discuss the purchase of real estate and to return to regular session for the sole purpose of adjournment. Second. All right. Second. All right, all those in favor? Hold the board. Mr. O'Rourke, aye. Talbot, aye. Mr. Annecy, aye. Mr. Bassino, aye. Mr. Stempak, aye. All right, we are set. Thank you, Vivek. Okay. okay. Thank you very much.
do you want to take these tablets with us